Peace, power, purpose. Welcome to another episode of The Daily Guide, The Daily Vibe, hosted by yours truly, Pretty Boss. I'm recording this on a lovely Wednesday, November 13th at 1028 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is prophetic guidance, spiritual guidance for those of you who've been called according to the purpose of the Most High. For those of you who have chosen that purpose back, for those of you who've been truly wanting to stay in alignment, truly wanting to stay on the path to be of service that you are meant to be in this particular life. 13 could be a significant number for you or one in three. Also, 6 and 31. There's something about 13, 31, 6, 1 and 3. Okay, 35 for some of you. 37. Definitely something about the number 3. So, just pay attention to that. Also, something that I'm hearing is good things come in 3. So, I get that from one of my favorite movies. Don't judge me, Baps. It just was one of my favorite movies growing up. It was always so funny to me. But on that movie, they always used to say good things come in threes. But I'm saying that because I'm hearing that. But the way that I'm interpreting that is confirmation for you is going to come in threes. Okay. So everything that you do, especially in this season, because remember, we've been talking about going with the flow of the divine. We've been talking about always will not work. They won't. You're going to see that anytime you fall into your old ways or any way you go into, anytime you go back into old patterns that are part of that old era, you're going to see things start to slow down for you. Whether it's just your ideas, whether it's your mindset, whether it's your energy, whether it's whatever things or people or obligations around you, you're going to see things start uh, feeling like there's some type of resistance when you're not going with that flow. So one of the things that is very important to make sure that you are staying in alignment with that flow is making sure that you're knowing when you're hearing the voice of the divine, when you're hearing divine guidance, or when it's something that's just coming from your own mind or coming from fear. And even when I say coming from your own mind, remember that even many of you, even though many people think you think your thoughts or thoughts are coming from you, they're actually not. It's coming from your mind in a sense that your brain is already wired a certain way. You've been having thoughts for a significant amount of time. You've been thinking those thoughts for so long that they turn into beliefs. And even though beliefs are not necessarily facts, they are just beliefs. They're experiences that you continue experiencing due to what you expect. And even with that, so many thoughts that people feel are not original at all. It's very easy to tap into the mind frame of fear and all of the thoughts associated with it and all of the lower vibrational things. Most of the thoughts that people, most people are thinking on a regular basis are pretty much the same. They're not unique at all, even though many people feel isolated. Let me pause this. Even though many people may feel isolated, okay, isolated in terms of feeling like you're the only person that thinks that way, that you're the only person that feels that way. It's like, no, many, actually most people do. And most people are prisoners of their mind. Most people are prisoners of their thought. So again, when we're talking about following that divine guidance, that higher guidance, we're breaking away from the normal. We're breaking away from our own minds. And a significant key here for those of you who this message is for is there are going to be certain ideas, certain things that you're led to do, certain actions that you're taking. And if you are being led by the divine, you're going to get confirmation in threes, okay? Very significant and undeniable confirmation. And you're not only going to get confirmation in terms of Holy Spirit, in terms of the internal confirmation that you're like, you know, I really feel this way or I got this inclination or this idea occurred to me. Those are the inner ways, but you're also going to receive external confirmation as well. Something very specific, very tangible. I want to say this too, because let me preface this. There are a few videos that I recorded for YouTube yesterday. And for the videos that I recorded on YouTube yesterday, like a lot of them have to do with relationships. Okay. A lot of them have to do with, you know, focus. A lot of them have to do with perspective. But I said that to say, even in terms of relationships, 
there are going to be many new relationships that are appearing in many of our lives in this new era. You know, there are going to be some people coming in that are meant to be there or might just be meant to be there for a season or meant to be there for a chapter. There are going to be other people who come, but it's not going to be beneficial for us to, to link with them or yoke with them in any type of way. So even when we're talking about relationships and especially too, when we're talking about kingdom partnerships, when we're talking about marriages, when we're talking about soulmates coming together in romantic love for divine purpose, kingdom purpose, and also for the p- pleasure of two people being brought to be- together by God in love, just the pleasure of the experience of that. It's important to remember that even with that, because again, many of you, many of us are going to start again forming and realizing that there are several opportunities for new relationships opening in our lives. And so even when we're talking about any of these relationships, whether it be friend, business, romance, or anything in between, when we are moving into new situations, when we're coming together with others, when we're allowing new people into our lives, make sure that you're taking that to the most high. It's funny because we're moving into a new season, right? The scripture that was so predominant for 2024 has been, we for we know that we walk by faith and not by sight. And it's funny because even as we're closing out the end of the year, I can totally see why that was the predominant scripture because so many of you, so many of us, even if we look back, there were probably a lot of opportunities and challenges for growth. Challenges are the things that provide those opportunities for growth. We'll ask for blessings, we'll ask for things, but a lot of us are unaware of the the route, the road that it takes to be able to acquire or to receive that which we ask for. And then we go through this process. So many of you, many of us have even been have been going through a process this year in 2024 in really doing some true alchemy and what things have looked like this year is 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 nothing in comparison to what Many of you, many of us have created and cultivated and focused within. So when we walk by faith and not by sight, the Most High has been telling us, look, you're moving in the right direction. Even if there are certain things that hasn't uh, produced fruit to a certain level that you were expecting it. Or if maybe, you you know, you, you feel like, well, I don't see any fruit, period. I've been sticking to these things, but I don't see anything shifting. For those of you who've been staying dedicated to the process for the sake of staying dedicated to the process. For those of you who have been seeking ye first the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness, for the sake of seeking ye first the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness, all of those things are getting ready to add to be added to you. Even for those of you who've had certain fruit and certain things manifest in your life this year in 2024, that is nothing in comparison to what you've actually created. Those have just been previews, glimpses. I don't even want to say teasers, but just previews of what you have been cultivating. You've been holding the course for a very long time and the blessings and the fruit is getting ready to truly explode in your life. But again, one of the important things that we're talking about here is getting that confirmation, even with relationships and and not to digress, but this year to, to, to run that back, the scripture was, for we walk by faith, not by sight. For 2025, the scripture is, it's taking us back to one of the my OG favorite scriptures, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Do not lean on your own understanding. Acknowledge the most high in all your ways and your paths will be made straight. This is where we're, this is the 2025 scripture for us. Do not lean on your own understanding. Acknowledge almighty in all your ways and your paths will be made straight. Now I said that to say, for those of you, even for 2024, who you 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 stood on the I, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Be still and know that I am Yah. You stood on that understanding that faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Those of you who stood in that posture, regardless of what you went through this year, this was probably a pretty good year for you. Even if you can look back and be like, oh yeah, I had multiple challenges. I had a lot of different things happened. But you can look back and realize that you enjoyed the year. And even through the challenges, you had some sort of peace and you had fruit of the spirit in your life because you were focused those who keep their minds and eyes on the most high shall be kept in perfect peace you were very well aware that we walk by faith and not by sight and so you held the course 
you stayed focused. You kept that laser beam focused on the prize. Even if you drifted here and there a little bit, which all of us do, the wind blows certain ways sometimes, you came right back and you held that course. You held the course, you held the focus more predominantly this year than any other thing that you've done in your life. Even for some of you listening right now, sometimes people have a tendency to feel like if they fall off their their routine or maybe they're like, man, I had everything going great. I was doing this. I was doing that. And now I haven't been able to do anything. Or let's say you had an exercise routine and now you got hurt. And it's like, I haven't even been able to exercise because I'm hurt. I can't physically do it if I want to. It's like, understand that all of these things are still working for you. Sometimes things happen for us and things happen to slow us down for different reasons. Even today, I should not even be recording this podcast today because I told y'all I had volunteering today, but my daughter's sick again. She was sick the week leading to um, the healing, not the healing retreat, but the November 2nd meet pop the balloon meet and greet. And then all of a sudden yesterday, all of a sudden she was sick again. And I think it's because she hopped in Halloween and I don't think she was fully recovered. And then we did all that. And then you know how if the sickness is is not all the way done to come back. And I think that I really believe that's what happened. And she's very active. She always has ballet, um, singing lessons, music classes. So she's very busy on top of homeschool and school. And I'm like, I think it was just her body didn't have adequate time to recover. And I really wanted to go to volunteering today they've been asking about me for a long time like it's a whole big thing up there and I thought to myself I asked my daughter I'm like well would you want to go to your grandparents house and rest so I could do volunteering or do you want me to stay home and take care of you and she's like I want you to so I was like you know what I don't understand she usually doesn't get sick to that capacity and even with her getting um sick in the times that she's been getting sick I have been having to alter my schedule a lot and it's a lot of things that I do have on my plate but I said that to say I look at that and I'm like you know what this is all still happening for a reason everything has a purpose you know even with my daughter being sick, that is going to slow me down in certain ways because she's my top priority. But I even look at those things like, well, th- this is how it's supposed to go. This is how the day should be. Things are always going exactly as they should. So again, do not lean on your own understanding. Acknowledge the most high in all of your ways and your paths will be made straight. Sometimes we could be on a fast track somewhere. We might have a momentum going and think, oh, boom, I'm going here. I'm going there. I'm doing this. And then we get slowed down. And we'll look at it like, well, this is inconvenient. Why did this happen? Not realizing it's for our good. It's like, hold on, you was about to pass something significant. I have this right here for you and you were about to blow past this whole blessing. And trust me, if you saw this, you wouldn't even be trying to get to where you thought you wanted to go. So this is the energy. And remember, with everything, even especially like for those of you, there might be something today. Or this week, and I, I, it, even with this, this is daily guidance, but this isn't just daily guidance. This is going to be guidance that is going to be very predominant throughout the month of November as well, even though it, it starts today. So some of you, it's like this is going to show up in your life in significant ways today. Some of you, there are going to be certain things that shows up today and others that shows up tomorrow. But this is the energy to focus on for November. Even as we've been talking about our unofficial seven days of manifestation challenge, make sure that you're staying focused. Make sure that you're cultivating and holding that space. Okay. Make sure that you're practicing gratitude. Even for those of you who are on that unofficial seven days of manifestation, do your 30 days of success and love. And also make sure that you write a gratitude list. Like, you know, just start making exercises of it. It, and let me tell you, a great time to practice positive mo- momentum, high vibrational focus is when you're feeling good, when you're feeling OK, when you're not down in the dumps. When we're down in the dumps, that's the hardest place to pull yourself up to the opposite polarity from, even though it's possible. But it takes a lot of work and a lot of people don't even have the mental focus to be able to snap back into it because they haven't held that space long enough. They haven't made that groove in their brain deep enough. So even today, as you're listening to this, put yourself in a situation like, let's say you go outside and you're like, you know what, let me go outside and look around and write three things outside of my yard or in my neighborhood or 10 things that I really like. Like, just look for like a scavenger hunt. You know, it could be things in, in anywhere, even about yourself or about other people. Like, start doing gratitude scavenger hunts where you're just doing it for fun. Like, you know what, you know how they have like the hidden objects game, like find just things that you look around and you're like you know what? I'm really grateful for this 
things you may not even have paid attention to or acknowledge. Like that's always a great um, positive momentum builder. And when we focus in that way, this is when manifestation goes crazy. This is when things easily and effortlessly flow into your life. So again, as we're moving into this new era, and many of us are there because like I said, y'all got wings. For those of you who I'm talking to, you already have your butterfly wings and some of you still in that cocoon, but they're coming. And another thing that I want to say too, anytime I'm giving these prophetic messages, if you're listening, you're like, man, that's not for me. I'm not in that part of my life. Or because there are going to be some other things I talk about, including relationships and things of that nature, specific messages that I have. But even if you're not there, understand that this is the prophetic potential for you. This is the potential over your life. This might not be things that are going to be showing up in your reality today or necessarily this month. For some of you, some of you know it is today. Some of you, it is this month because you're already there and you know that. But for those of you that might not quite be there, allow yourself to just relax and explore the possibility of it because this is how you make space. Enjoy the essence of it. It's like, Think about, because there are so many messages here today, even about prosperity, about love, about actions and different things. But a lot of people want to see the results and then they want to fill away. And that's simply not how life works. And on rare occasions when you do witness something that shifts your energy because it was a great observation to you, If you train yourself to be conditional in that way to where you have to observe something in order to feel a specific way, then now you train yourself to be a slave to conditions. Now you train yourself to be a slave to emotions, having your emotions control you instead of you using them to co-create instead of you using them for what they were intended for which is to guide you along your path so this is a time where again for everybody listening to this i highly suggest that you should take time to clear your mind and create space for the possibility that Blessings are getting ready to unfold in your life in ways that you have not thought of. Why do I say this? Because one scripture tells us God will do exceedingly and abundantly above and beyond anything that we think or ask. Now, I have personally witnessed this a trillion times, maybe a slight exaggeration, maybe not, in my life. There will be certain things. Sometimes you're so crunchy, you're so pressed, you think that you need a certain blessing or a certain thing to alleviate stress, to feel a certain type of way, to fight, to regain peace. When in actuality, the only thing that we always need to do is recenter ourselves, refocus, look up, look within, but not around. When we start looking around, that's when there's so much to get lost in. It's all so much distraction. When we look up, That's just pure peace. When we look within, pure silence, pure peace. So we have to really get used to and get comfortable doing that because, again, what many of you are going to realize is there are going to be certain things that are coming into your life. There are certain manifestations that are ready for you now that you haven't even thought of. So let's say you've been praying for, and this is just to give an example. But let's say you've been praying for, um, let's say you're like, you know what, I I, I want to move to a new apartment. There's an apartment complex and it's like, you know, I want to move over there. I'm staying in the same city, but I just want to move. This place is so small. This is what we do. Whoop. And what you don't even realize is like, maybe what the most high has for you is like, you know, you go some, for you to travel and go somewhere and then when you're over there, you're like, you know, it's a completely different opportunity, which you were thinking, you were thinking, you know, I just want a new apartment. I want a bigger space. And maybe the most high has completely other territory carved out for you in a country that you would never have thought of that when you get there, it's like, man, this is my soul has had to have been born here. This is me. Like, where has this been my whole life? 
And that's just an example, but it can come in many ways. It can be completely unrelated. It can be that you think like, you're like, man, I really need a new job. I need to get these finances together. I got bills to pay. And when you let go and you're going with the flow and doing what you can do, it might be that you meet somebody that day. And when you meet that person, you're like, man, look, I, all the things that I thought I wanted, this job, this, 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 that, all of that is irrelevant. Like this is the greatest thing that it could have ever happened to me was running into this specific person today. And that relationship could be something that changes everything. So I said that to say a lot of times we miss God because we like to micromanage the Lord. We do. We don't like to be micromanaging. We're going to know I hate being micromanaged. Let me work in my autonomy. I got hired for a reason. I know what I'm doing. Get off my back, supervisor, who's not getting paid much more than me. Get off my back. That's how we feel when we're being micromanaged, when we know what we're doing. But then we got the audacity to turn around and micromanage the most high. We got the audacity to micromanage the divine. We got the audacity to say, okay, you know what? For I know I walk by faith and not by sight. I know that you came so that I may have life and live it abundantly. But, but, but let me tell you how to do it, Lord. I need this on this date by this time at this or else. Or else, Lord, I'm turned up. Or else I'm doubtful. Or, or else I'm fearful. Or else I feel away, Lord. I need this blessing now. I need that blessing then. And this is how you're going to do it, too. I don't want you to bring it through my side door. I want you to bring it through the left side door, not the right side door. And it better be a certain temperature when you do it. We be micromanaging the most high. It's, it's about asking at a substantial level. Asking you shall receive. Seeking you shall find. Knocking it shall be opened unto you. But we ask for the wrong things. We pray and miss a lot of times because we miss the substantial reality. Imagine if you're like, your prayer turned from, you know, show me finances, which is nothing wrong with that. God can lead us to all of these things. It's just most of the time we already have built up so much resistance in regards to what we're asking for that we're far away from being able to hear the answer because we're going to hear what we've been hearing the whole time, which is regurgitations of our deep down suppressed belief systems. That many people are not even consciously aware of what their true beliefs are in regards to many things in their life. And while life always seems like it's happening and things are, are happening to us, especially as adults, I'm not talking about when we're children, but it feels like life is happening because most people just haven't, you know, grasped the fact that our lives are powerful mirrors and reflections of what's happening mentally and internally inside of us. So I said that to say Many of you, okay, um, so with all of that being said, one of the the key things I wanted to drive here before we get into the rest of this prophetic message, because I have to really, we moving on up, you know, and, but there's still certain foundations that have to be laid and I can't skip the, the prophetic guidance that comes to me as I'm sitting down to record the messages. But remember, wait for confirmation. Confirmation is going to come in threes. In anything that God is guiding you to do. Even when I was going to do the event, shouts out to everybody who came November 2nd. I love y'all. Like, I'll never forget that. Honestly, like, if it, I feel so at ease and peaceful closing out the year, having had that gathering with people who mean what they mean to me, which all of you are very significant in my life, even though we don't always get to be in person. It's a spiritual thing. We're connected in spirit and truth. We soul family for real. So it's like, even though who knows, okay, what's on the horizon in terms of 2025 and all these things, we got to come together. And I said that to say that was a stretch for me. I did. And I popped the the meeting greet off because we've been talking about on Patreon. And it was a specific person who was like, please let us know ahead of time. And it's funny because they didn't even get a ticket. I don't even think they tried to get a ticket. But because I was like, you know what, let me stick to that. Boom. I was like, you know what? Boom, let me do it. Hit up my assistant. And then when I told us my assistant the date, I told y'all the date that I was thinking. Then when I told my assistant, she's like, well, that's my birthday. I'm like, wait a minute, what? Boom, even more confirmation. And then it, it just kept coming. It was it was tight for me. It's like, you know, I know everybody, some pe- people just have no idea how things are behind the scenes, but I, I'll be out here at, with life like everybody else. I've been affected just as everybody else has been affected by life in all ways, in all four corners, in all four pillars of life. 
But it's like, you know, even the amount that that I had to invest into that event, that wasn't, you know, it it was it, it was up there. And especially for the amount of time and then the, the ticket price and all of these things, I was like, you know, it was a stretch. But I literally received confirmation more than three times in a row, but three times in a row. And I wasn't even thinking about that when I said good things come through, but I know Holy Spirit is reminding me of this because this is something that literally just happened for many of us that even many of you got to witness to where we put that again together. We did that. We co-created that. That was our manifestation. Everybody who was there, we manifested that together. So it's like, even with that, I was having in my own mind, trust me, it was many things like, man, like, I don't know, this ain't the time. I don't know, these ticket prices might be too high for, for some people might not be able to do it, even though it needed to be there in order to even make the, the event sustainable. It was a lot that was put into it financially from my end, you know? And then it was like, okay, even if that is, then do we have enough time? Do I have enough time to promote? I mean, there were so many questions in the physical that I'm like look Lord I don't know like I hear you leading me to do this but everything else in my life is telling me like this ain't the time and guess what I still stuck the course because the confirmation was crazy like the confirmation was ridiculous I got three strong confirmations back to back in the physical too not just in my own mind like oh you know I feel I got this idea it's like no it came unapologetically same way when I put in my two weeks notice for the only job I really had as an adult after I graduated from college at a call center and I never forget like when it was time for me to put in a two weeks notice I got confirmation three times in the wildest ways somebody who I was talking to at the time that was kind of like becoming a friend they said put in a two weeks notice and that they were my third confirmation. When I talked to them the next day and told them I put in the three, the two weeks notice, they were like, what? I didn't tell you to put in the two weeks notice. They didn't even know they said that. And it really had no context for the conversation. But again, things will come in three. So I said that to say, this is how we're being led to move. And this is important too, because you don't want to just hear something or feel that you have an idea or you're inspired to do something, but it's not how you're being called because then it's going to lead you down a path that it's like, okay, you're going to be like, well, why? I thought I was led here. Why is this happening? It's like, no, that's not it. We have to really be perceptive. We got to really Proverbs three, five, six, and seven that we're we're not leaning on on our on on our own understanding, and we're really allowing for the confirmation to come. Cause I know how we get. I know for me, I ain't gonna speak for y'all, but I know for me, sometimes I can get very excited about a thing, very excited, and it's like, oh my god, yes, and just my head just starts flooding with just visions, ideas, thoughts, and all types of things. But and then if we're being honest sometimes there's been times in my life where I'll be like okay and I'll pray about it like God is this for me and, but you're not even letting the confirmation hit you just like okay thank you God this for me boom but did you really sit and wait for the answer so this is important for us during this time because again this is a critical time in terms of a, a there's a certain door of opportunity that is opened for those who are ready to go, for those who are on this path, for those who have these wings, for those of you who it's like, no, this is a new era. It's the end of an old cycle for you. This is a completely new beginning. This is a time in your life where we're talking about blessings on top of blessings on top of blessings. We're talking about real increase. We're talking about, especially financially, we're talking about the pillars of your life. One of the things that I was going to say earlier, thank you, Holy Spirit, for bringing it back, is when we're talking about folks and when we're talking about praying for things and people are praying amiss, for instance, to bring it to finances, let's say the average person to say, you know, I need more money, I need a job, I need this, I need a business idea, I need whatever. But imagine if you really go to the substantial reality of that and you realize what you're really seeking, what you really desire, stability. That's at the core of finances. Like, even before you want freedom, like, we want stability, right? And then you might also, yeah, I want financial freedom as well, too, so you can have opportunities and all of these things. But at the very core of that, before we can even get to flying, we want to be able to at least put our feet on solid ground. So a way to pray about that and think to meditate and ponder on is, Lord, thank you for, you know, show me stability in my life. Lead me on the path to stability. Help me to align with stability. Show me the places in my life where I have stability and allow me to continue to cultivate that space so that I can have more stability across other aspects of my life. And you're going to see, you know, it's it's all about what we pray for. Even again, going back to the example with Solomon, God was like, look, what you want? You can have anything. 
He was like, give me wisdom. He didn't say, give me a trillion dollars. He didn't say, give me all the gold of the world. He didn't say, give me all the cars, clothes, and pros. He said, give me wisdom. And because he prayed for the right thing, he was able to use that wisdom to get many things. He was the king of kings. Even for many of us, it's simple as that. Even I'm talking about stability. That's even being specific. We can go back to Solomon with it and just pray, Lord God, give me wisdom. It's so simple that it just goes over most of our heads. Like, Lord God, give me wisdom. If there's a certain area, give, God, give me wisdom over my finances. God, give me wisdom over um, my my health. Give, give me wisdom over my job. Give me wisdom over my relationship or over my relationships. Give me wisdom with how I should go about my day. We can pray for this wisdom all the time because the God, the wisdom of God is always available to us. So again, you are somebody who I'm talking to, okay? Those of you who, this is a, a prophetic message that's getting ready to activate in your life today or this week or within like the next six days. This is something that's happening relatively quickly. You're shifting, okay? And you've shifted. Right. Let's let's be clear. But now you've already shifted internally, but now your physical experience is going you're going to start seeing that shift as well. Things are getting ready to change. Things are not always going to be this way for some of you. You are still in a caterpillar stage, but you don't get it. Your wings are getting ready to bust forth. Others of you, you were a caterpillar. But now you're a butterfly and you're going to see a lot of different shifts and changes that are significant that are occurring in your life in November. Now, again, when we're talking about these prophetic messages, we also have to realize and recognize that these are potentialities. So when we're looking and listening to prophetic guidance in order to really see these prophetic messages come and appear and reveal themselves to you in your life, then we have to stay the course. We got to follow the prophetic guidance. People want the fruit of the prophetic word, but are they doing the part? Are they doing the work? It's like when people say people want the, um, people don't want your, people want your glory, but they don't want your story. So people want the prophetic word, but then people don't want to do what is required in order to see the prophetic word perform and manifest over their life. So again, one of the things I always ask about, and some of you might want to do is really take time to self-reflect, take a time to look in. There are certain things that you don't like about your life, certain patterns that you're having, certain beliefs that you're holding. Take time to reflect on it. I'm telling you, no no matter what you've been through, no matter what has happened, no matter what's happening now, we never gain power back in our lives until we realize that the only power that we truly have has always lied within us. It's not in other people. We can point fingers all day. Yes, people do wrong things. People do all type of stuff. But when it's time for us to take our power back, we realize that there's not one that has power over us other than the divine. And the divine is all that is. The most high is love. Love is more powerful than all things. Love is the only thing that is true. Everything that is not an expression or doesn't seem to reflect that is an illusion. So this is a time and we're going to talk about today. Talk less. And this is another thing to realize that everything is working out for you. This is so important because some of you are going to start realizing what I'm saying. But when you do tap into a certain mindset and you hold that space for long enough, you really will start being like, yo, this is crazy. Like the old me, this would have happened and I would have been freaking out. Now I'm laughing. The old me, this would have happened. I would have been feeling some type of way. And now I'm like, oh my God, this is good because now I can focus in this direction. When you start to really be able to calibrate yourself and focus your mind. And again, you have to stick to it long enough to where you can see changes. Where this everybody, this is a popcorn society. People want quick results, but nothing everlasting comes quickly. Everything takes time. So you're gonna start seeing that regardless of anything, even people, you're gonna start being coming to a place where it's like people can't even disappoint you. 
because you realize nothing is never about anybody else or anything outside of you. It's all about you and life is always mirroring you back to yourself or mirroring a person to you that's making you try to see something inside of you that has been hidden. Not to expose you, not to make you feel shameful, not to say, oh, you're sinful, you're dirty, and you're unperfect. None of that. Because God looks at us through the eyes of God. When God looks at his children, God sees his children. He sees perfection. We know what the Bible says. Your sins, your this, your that is blotted as far as the east is from the west. God forgets them. Because God only sees his perfect creation when he looks at you. But again, we're caught up in this world of all of these things. and. Again, it's very important to make sure that you are aligning with appropriate perspective over your life. You'll start to realize that you're so powerful in everything else that seems to be this big obstacle or this big boogeyman. It's none of that. It's all a reflection of what is the fruit of your mind producing. Everything that we sow, we shall reap. And when we think about reaping and sowing, this is what I want everybody to understand. Even the Bible tells us people who pray outwardly, they will receive a reward. But those who pray inwardly, and this is a paraphrase, their reward is completely different. Those who give and give inside and give publicly, there's a reward for that. But those who give in private, oh, there's a whole different level of reward for that. And this is because God, we know that God doesn't look on the outer, God looks on the inner. Man is easily fooled and duped all the day long by the outer, which is why we're in the position where we're in now as a society. And a lot of people are going to start seeing things get even realer in 2025. Enjoy what you what you asked for. For those who did. But it's like, for those of you who are listening to this, you start to realize the most important thing we need to understand when we're talking about reaping and sowing. Because many people say, well, I've done this. I've done these things. Where's my stuff? When is mine coming in? It's all about pay attention to the seeds that you're sowing in your mind. Pay attention to the way that you're thinking to yourself, thinking about yourself, thinking about others, feeling about things. Like, pay attention to the seeds that you constantly are sowing. This is where we sow on a rapid, continual, and infinite basis. We sow into our own mind thoughts. And that which we dwell on, that which we focus on, mirrors itself back to us in our physical reality. So we do reap what we sow. Even if you do all the right things, but you have the the wrong thoughts, what do you think is going to happen? Think about that. Many of you who are listening are like, man, yeah, because I've had this. There has to be some credence to this because I've been doing many right things right for many years. But have you been thinking right? And again, one of the reasons it says those who give in silence are doing silence or praying silence, there's a different reward because, again, it goes back to that intention thing. There could be somebody that a person looks at and it's like, they never do anything for anybody. I tithe, I do this, I go to church, I do all of these right things. But what's the mindset? What are the thoughts of that person? Then it could be another person where it's like they they don't they might not do all these external things. They might not go to church. They might not do this. They might not tithe regularly to this place or donate to this place over here. But their thoughts are holy. Their thoughts are pure. The way that they think about themselves and think about others and, and show up in ways that God tells them to show up is authentic. And they will reap the fruit of that. So when we're talking about reaping and sowing, I want you to remember and really think about it this point moving forward is what are you sowing into your mind? When you're thinking about your life, when you're thinking about finance, when you're thinking about love, what do you think about it? Or do you have negative thoughts? Do you have positive thoughts? Let's take negative and positive out. Do your thoughts feel good or do they feel bad? When you think about your love life, do your thoughts feel good or feel bad? When you think about finances, good or bad, health, good or bad. Fill in the blank, good or bad. This is going to tell you what you are sowing and you're going to continue to reap that. So off of that, okay, um, I feel like a lot of these prophetic messages are coming through because some of these messages I feel like are backed up 
for some people, but it still need to be heard. I just feel like something like that because I came here to give a specific prophetic message, but these things have been coming up and they were meant to be said. So let's move forward. Okay. We're already 39, 40 minutes in 40 on the diet for it be, could also be a significant number. This is, you're doing great. Okay. Whoever this is for those of you who have wings, you're right where you need to be. Hold the course, continue to speak positively over your life. Continue to find positive affirmations. 30 days of success and love. As I told y'all, And even for those of y'all who are doing it, remember, stick to your self-care daily routine. If you forget everything else to do on 30 Days of Success and Love, which I don't recommend, make sure that you stick to day two. Make sure that you do that every day and every week of the challenge. Something for your self-care routine. One of the things that I wrote down that I'll be doing, which I did yesterday, is affirmations. And I'm going to start doing that every day, but not affirmations in terms of like saying the same affirmation every day for me has become like a journaling exercise where it's like you are just cultivating your thoughts you're refining your thoughts you're refining your mind frame affirmations are powerful when you speak them when you say them when you write them and you feel relief instantly you feel lighter you feel like oh I just went up a notch I felt the shift this is when we know that we're thinking and we're speaking the right things into our lives and mind Think it through. Anything that you're wanting, anything that you're experiencing, make sure that you find the appropriate perspective. See, this is the work. It's so simple yet so difficult to many people because this is not what we've been taught and this is not what people practice. People practice responding to external conditions, being reactive. Most people don't practice being proactive. Most people don't practice cultivating their thoughts, cultivating their mind frame. If they find themselves in a positive shift or having a good day, milking that for all it's worth. You feel grateful, continue to just ride that and talk about it and think about it like until the wheels fall off. But no, most people do the opposite. Most people have a good day and say, okay, today was good. Then tomorrow something that they don't like happens. When they just had an epic day yesterday and yesterday's out the window because it's like, no, look at this problem. Now I'm going to dwell on this problem for the next 365 days. This is the life. But when we have something good, it's like, oh, yeah, that's fun. Oh, well, now back to disaster. Most people don't train themselves to continuously look for good, appreciate good and pump it up when it's there. You can have a good situation, a good occurrence, and you could be living that over and over in your mind and then you'll start realizing like, man, this, I had this experience one time, but I relived it several times. And now I have so many experiences that are just like that showing up in my life. So <laughs> you're on a new path. You, those of you who this is for, you don't have baggage like that. You have what you need. Some of you have probably also been doing this in your physical life. Even another thing that I've been talking about practically for this week, make sure that you're cleaning. Make sure that you're you're doing what needs to be done, putting stuff in order. Some of you may feel like, look, I got work. I got all these other things to do. It's like take care of your priorities because you're going to see, again, once you start at the root, everything else eases itself out. So it's like, let's say you're like, man, I need to figure out a business plan. I got this going. I need this going. I got to do this. It's like, no, just focus on organizing your desk. Focus on organizing your finances, cleaning out your home, cleaning out that cabinet, the drawers, cleaning out or organizing things in your bathroom, getting rid of things that you don't need. And you'll be like, you'll see that it's like, man, I thought I should have been focused on this project today because I need to get it done. I need to have it done by Friday. And with me just taking the prophetic guidance, focusing on the, the root of things, getting my house in order and whatever way that be may be represented for you. You might be like, man, in the midst of doing what I, wasn't gonna do because I was trying to micromanage God and letting God know no I need to do this first in the midst of doing what I wasn't even gonna do all of the answers came to me or I came across something that is like man this is perfect like alignment so again some of you have been reduced and some of you might even have been going to uh towards minimalism in certain aspects of your life but this is because you just don't carry that baggage a lot of you are going to start to realize too that when you really start to lighten your load, when you really, when things start to really lift off of you in terms of emotional baggage, you're going to see that you don't have a desire for like just a whole bunch of physical things. 
even when you look at people who hoard or anywhere in between that, because I, I used to, you know, we know baby hoarders. Like, every, everybody's not like that show on TLC where it's ridiculous. Like, oh, yeah, they hoard. But it's a lot of people that are baby hoarders, though. They might make it look neat. You might be able to walk in the house, but when you open up that closet, nothing but stuff. Going to the bed, nothing but stuff. Going to the attic, nothing but stuff. Going to the shed, nothing but stuff. Open up any drawer, cabinet, nothing but stuff. That's too much stuff. In my kitchen, I literally have the amount of plates and cups I need. That's it. Back in the day, the old me, man, I, I remember when I used to move, I used to have boxes of plates and cups. Like, that's crazy. That's not even necessary. Like, why would you need that? We don't need all that. I like to have what I need, and I'm still getting rid of stuff, but I've been able to reduce at least 60% of things that I owned I've been able to get rid of over the past three years. And it's a, it's like I I can't get rid of enough. It's like I be getting rid of stuff. I'm like, how are there stairs? There's still stuff. And I'm still doing it. But it's like what you'll see is as you you release certain blockages and attachments within yourself, you're not even going to feel it. You're not going to need to to carry. You're not going to want to carry things with you. Because it's just going to seem like it's too much. When you don't got the baggage within, you're not going to need it without. So for some of you, it's that. Another thing is like, stay strong on your journey. Embrace the energy of peace. Stand firm in your decisions. Stand firm in your convictions. Don't even argue with people. Like, I'm telling you right now, especially today, and even this week is a time to be radically focused. But for those of you listening today, start today with talking less. And when you talk to people, it's like, you know, only engage when it truly flows to you. Like, don't force yourself to ha- engage in a conversation that is inappropriate for you for whatever reason. Stand your ground, you stand your ground, but it's like we can do these things respectfully. And then if somebody does cross your boundaries and it's like you're trying to respectfully, then remember that for next time to where, okay, you're not, I'm not even going to put myself in a position for them to be able to do that again. But hold that peace because victory is yours. You don't have to explain yourself to anybody. For a lot of you, there are going to be certain things that you're led to do that is going to really benefit you. I'm talking about majorly, especially in terms of prosperity. And we're not just talking about materially which we're definitely talking about that but we're talking about spiritually as well because it goes together people will tell you the opposite oh you got you broken people who rich are this and that and some people are there's many wicked rich people there's many wicked all type of people you got wicked rich and poor people you got good poor and pe- poor and rich people too it's just the, all combinations of everything on earth but again you can't focus your life based on this person and what they did you got to understand that as a child of god if you are really being the light If you are really bearing the fruit, you're not going to be walking around here in lack. You're the head and not the tail, the lender, not the bar. The Bible tells you this. So why is there any confusion or doubt? The Bible doesn't say money is the root of all evil. It says the love of money is the root of all evil. Money is a tool. That's like me saying a hammer is the root of all evil. No, a hammer can be very beneficial. You're trying to build a house. You're trying to build a deck. That hammer is useful. But there's other very destructive ways you can use hammers too to invoke harm and do all type of stuff. So it's not the 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 hammer. It's the one that's using the hammer. It's the person applying the hammer. So that's the same thing with money or anything else. So I said that to say, some of you do some work to shift out of that lack mentality. Like do some work to understand that you are worthy of great things. This is your divine birthright. This is who you are. This is why it's important to know who you are. And when you know God, you'll know yourself. You'll be able to see yourself the way that God sees you. We're not talking about perfection in terms of anything physical on earth. You're not this physical body. You're not this mind. These are vehicles that we're composed of. But when you connect with the truth of who you are, you'll realize that blessings are your divine birthright. You'll accept that help should be flowing in your life from everywhere. You should be feeling support all around you. You'll constantly be in, you know, propelled to action, constructive action, creating, moving. Like some of you don't even realize, like I'll say this, this coming to me very strong. Some of you don't realize that even in terms of like um, time, I was going to say something about time. 
that slipped me. I'll come back to it. It's just so many messages. Like this whole time I've been talking, I'm like, we're already 49 minutes in and I've literally been trying to get all these prophetic messages out, but I just feel like there's a thousand messages I'm trying to get out one at a time. But we'll come back to that one if we need to come back to that. But again, this is about holding your course. This is about allowing and seeing things shift around you due to your own focus, due to what you're thinking about. This is a time that for those of you who've been doing the work and you've been cultivating, you're getting ready to see some amazing fruit. One thing after another, like think about a fresh garden that you planted, you've been harvesting. It's like, man, nothing's growing. And then all of a sudden you got this big old field, this big old farm, and it's like everything's sprouting at once. This is what's happening for you. Some of you have been waiting on something or waiting on someone, and it's like your wait and delay is over. This is what I was going to say. Thank you, Holy Spirit. What a lot of you are going to start realizing is you don't need as much sleep that you thought you did. You don't need as much food as you thought you did. Like, And some, and some, it's, it's nothing wrong with food. It's not saying that none of that. Everybody's different. Everybody needs different things. But what I mean by that is you're going to start seeing that when you're really in alignment, you have energy for days. Because the fact of the matter is we're never tired. Like who you are is never tired. The spirit is never asleep. Like your spirit is always awake. Your spirit is always conscious. Consciousness is always conscious. What goes to sleep are these physical bodies. But when you start to really align with that higher nature, when you start to really step into that 5D, you're going to start seeing that a lot of the things that you thought you needed, you don't need it or you don't need it to the same intensity or the same amount or to the same degree. And you're going to see that you're really rapidly moving and just constantly creating and doing things. And on the outside looking in, it'll be like, what is this person like? What type? What in the drug is this person on? Like, how are they doing all of this? But it's, it has nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with alignment and going with the flow. And, and passion is getting ready to expand your life in so many ways. Like you are already in the midst, some of you, of doing things that your passion is going to continue to grow about. Or you're getting ready to start tapping into something where it's like passion is going to be all around you. And when you're in your passion, when you're working in your gift, this is where dollars come. This is where finances come from. If you want to find a path of infinite abundance for you, go with the flow. Go with what you're being led to do. Follow your heart. Start with your gift. Start with what you're good at. It says our gifts make room for us amongst the great. A lot of people will look and see what other people do and be like, you know what, that's how they made money. Let me do that to make money. But the way that you make money, maybe nobody has even done a thing such as that yet. But again, you'll never know unless you follow your path. When I started making videos for the fun of it, when I was in college, that I, it wasn't even, I wasn't even putting anything on YouTube or anything. I was just doing it for fun. I had no idea that one day I would be making plenty of videos that would have created plenty of opportunities for me. I had no idea. I was just doing something that I loved to do and I, and it was helping me to practice. So by the time I did do my first YouTube video, I felt relatively comfortable in front of the camera. I still felt a little bit of anxiety and a little bit of shyness and things of that nature because it was new. But I was well practiced because I had just been doing it for the fun of it just because. Not because I was like, oh, let me do this for YouTube. It's just I was going with my flow. And lo and behold, look where we're at today. Look at what Pretty Boss TV has uh, evolved into and is still growing into more. Follow your passion. Do what you're led to do. Stand your ground. Say no when you mean no. This is going to be in pivotal. Oh, you know what's so crazy? Even today, like having to say no. Remember with 30 days to success and love for day two, one of the things I also wrote down for my daily self-care routine is saying no. That's the third thing I wrote down. And even today, like I, it, a part of me felt bad because there's so many people that want me to go back to volunteer and they love me up there. And they've been asking about me for a long time. But I'm like, my daughter, she doesn't feel good and she's my first priority. And then I'm like, there are other things. I'm trying to get uh, certain videos out and things done this week, even in terms of the event. It's, it's a lot of things that I already have also lined up that is not really the most appropriate time. I want to go. But if I'm being honest, today was a day where it's like, yeah, I wanted to go. But if, if I'm thinking about it, maybe I wanted to go 95%. Because 5% of other stuff just wasn't in order that would allow me to go. So I had to say no to that. Maybe in another dispensation or another time, it's like, you know, I would have compromised or been like, you know what, let me take my daughter here so I can do this. But it's like, no, first of all, my first priority is my daughter, one, I'm going to be honest. 
even before myself like yes i have to take care of myself and i do i'm fine but she's my first priority i'm just being being completely honest about it so after her then you know it's like no i'm choosing that that is my priority so i had to say no to anything outside of that and it's not the only time i had to do it this week but it's like when you are standing your ground with things oh, i had to i had to say no to a date yesterday and and the craziest things i did want to go like i really wanted to go on the date like 95% <laughs> 95 percent, possibly even 99 percent, but again it just wasn't the time i had a lot of things that i already had to do my daughter's not feeling well i'm not gonna drop my daughter off even though she could totally go to my parents house and be great she loves it over there but she wants to be home she wants her mother to take care of her so i had to say no the old me would have probably again tried to maybe i can do this maybe no, no, no. it's just no if it's not 100 percent, yes it's no and these things will empower you because when especially some of you really need that message because a lot of people have a problem saying no okay and when you're not saying no to things that you need to say no to you're dishonoring yourself you're not being loyal to yourself you're not loving yourself you're not putting yourself first okay and if you're constantly telling no to yourself you're going to constantly experience things in life that is like still no. You're like, why am I looking for my yes? I can never have this. I'm. The, it's always something with my friends. It's always something with my business. It's always something with this. It's never just completely what I want. Well, that's because you're always saying yes to things that you don't really desire. That's not that deliberate focused energy. Say yes to things that you mean 100% yes and no to things that are a no. And watch how even just that small change in your life, everything starts to shift. Because a lot of people sometimes have a problem saying no and say yes too soon because they're more concerned with how other people perceive them. I I enjoy when other people think highly of me. I do. Everybody, who doesn't want people to think well of them? Nobody wants people to think bad of them. So I enjoy when people like my company. I enjoy when people want to be around me, all of these things. But not to the detriment of myself. And none of us should do that. So even with many people who might say yes when they really mean no, it's because people pleasing. You don't want to destroy that person's image or view of you. But again, we got to ask ourselves, do we want those relationships? Do we want relationships where we're not able to authentically be ourselves and still retain the relationship? Do we want relationships that we got to bend over backwards and always compromise ourselves in order to keep that person or those people in our lives? No, we don't. So the sooner you get used to this, it might be uncomfortable at first, but you'll start to see it's the most empowering thing that you have that you can do. And again, when we're talking about stepping outside of our comfort zone, which is also a very predominant message of November, this is important. Some of you saying no is outside of your comfort zone. Start exercising it one opportunity at a time. And you'll see that life is giving you these opportunities. <laughs> like anything that you pray for, the opportunities will come. But then it's like you got to stick to it. You got to show that it's like, okay, I see the opportunity. And guess what? I'm ready to pass this test or opportunity with flying colors. Many of you are, have grown so much spiritually and are continuing to grow spiritually because your heart portal is expanding. You're healing. And you're going to see much financial reflection in your life because of this. Finances are expanding all around you. You're right on the path to where you need to be. A lot of you are exactly where you need to be. Like you're literally on the road. You're on the path to success. A long-term st financial stability, too. The things that you're building during this time, they're going to stand. This is a completely new cycle, new era. Everything that you touch will turn to gold. This is victory, 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 victory for you. This is chess, not checkers, and you have all the pieces that you need, and you have the wisdom from your own experience, but you also have access at all times to divine wisdom. This is inside of you. A lot of you are going to also really start to to see your own power. Like not only are you healing yourself, but you're coming to a point of healing yourself to where the your ability to heal others is even increasing greater. Many people are healers. A lot of us, a lot of chosen ones are healers. That's the very um, predominant spiritual gift, especially in this day and age. Many people have the gift of healing, but before we can heal others, the first your first assignment is going to be yourself. 
Can you lay hands on yourself? Can you shift your own mindset for yourself? And again, we do all things through the most high who strengthens us. Absolutely. But again, faith without works is dead. So you do have to do your part too. We're talking wealth. You're moving towards like great wealth and prosperity. Like you're building from the ground up and you're going up. You're going to the next level. A lot of you, even this month, you're going to get certain opportunities to open up for you. Financial increases. A lot of you are going to be having like money out of nowhere. Even if you have a store or certain businesses, like you're going to see an uptick in clients and things like that of of that nature this month. Unexpectedly. And even with what you get with everything that comes to you, this is a, a, a sidebar and you'll, you'll be surprised how much increase you find in your life so quickly from doing this 10%, take 10% of everything that you get. I don't care if it's $5, $100, $1,000, $10,000, $10, take 5% of it and put it away into a savings. If you already have ways to invest and you know how to invest, then you could do that. If you have an index fund, you could do that. Whatever ways you want to put it away, but pay yourself first. You can pay yourself in the midst of honoring your debts, but make sure you have yourself in that financial plan. You got a debt plan. Make sure that part of that debt plan is paying yourself first. This is how you build wealth. If you don't have it, how can you have it to even give to a debt collector tomorrow? No, you always must secure your own fortune first. 10%. And I know that 10% sounds very familiar. Okay. Be open because things are changing for you. Also, just like I said, be open to help. A lot of you are going to be receiving a leg up. A lot of you are going to receive just help that seems to come from out the blue. Like, yes, actually, I needed that. Take it. No, you don't know. owe anybody, anything. If a person or anybody is doing anything for anybody, it should be authentic. And if it's not, that's not on you. That's on them. If it's not genuine, that's not on you. That's that's on them. Remember that every gift, every help that we receive, it comes from the Lord. Of course, we have to receive it through other people or situations because God is not going to jump out of the sky because that's not even the essence of God. We like to try to personify God. And there's a lot of people that do believe that God is a man with a long beard in the sky, which is was not. No, no. Even these physical bodies we are in is an illusion. Like the Bible tells us there is no graven image, no creeping thing, no likeness, nothing, nothing that you can make to represent me. So, you know, you're tapping into truth, clarity, purpose, direction, power. And again, like I said, some of you are really, really healing. Some of you are going to experience something about the body that this is the thing, too, that came to me that I want to get out. All right. When I was meditating, something that came to me about even these prophetic messages is the fact that there are certain parts of the body that people are still very ignorant regarding. Even we have science, we have all of these things, physiology. But there is so much of the body that we have not tapped into. Like, you know how they say, oh, you only use not even 10% of your brain. Well, we don't even realize, we don't even understand the, the the body that we're functioning in. The way that I said this to my friend the other night, I was like, think about cell phones. These cell phones can probably do everything. All of us have cell phones that we probably would be shocked. Like, wow, that could do that. I didn't know that. Because look, they have a million features, but we just use what we use. Text. A little apps we use, pictures. Sometimes we can't even find the, the apps we usually use. It's like so many capabilities that we're not tuned into with these new technologies. Maybe children are, they got time to get off of school and be playing with their phone all day. But adults, we just get a new phone and that's it. We do the same thing we did with the old phone. So that's the same thing with these bodies. It's like, think about it, this body's a cell phone and we just been using it to call and do text messages and take pictures, not realizing like this could do a lot more. So for a lot of you, as you're on this journey, as you're healing, you're also going to be given wisdom and you're going to be shown certain things. Like I want to say it's like ancient healing techniques, like real ancient healing techniques, though, like it's making me think of like reflexology or even when we're talking about acupuncture. And there is a lot of things that already taps into that. But I'm telling you, it's like it's so much more basic. Like it's for instance, let's say it's like if you pull your ear down three times, it balances your sinus cavity like and i'm just making that up but i'm saying like things like that like you'll be surprised this is literally a machine 
The same way when you have a car, you push certain buttons, it does different things. That's like with the body. And some of you, some of us are going to be really tapping into ancient healing wisdom um, that was once very well known that has been so lost. And the thing about it is when we start to discover these things, it's going to be like, no way. How do we not know this? This has been under our nose the whole time. This is simple to do. It's things like that. Very important message because some of you are also going to be um, the ones receiving it, especially if you know you have um, certain healing um, energy and you heal and you're very aware of your ability to do so and connect with healing. Um, that's going to be a very specific message for you. Another thing, and one of the last things I'm going to close out is you have the relationships are going to be very significant during this time. Okay. Oh, another thing that I want to say before we go into relationships about finances and prosperity, take action, take charge. You're a leader, do what you're being led to do. A lot of you need to also reflect on yourself in a way that there are certain things inside of you that you're not taking advantage of. There are certain gifts and certain skills that are so valuable inside of you that if you just isolated that one thing, it would change your entire fortune. But you have to relook at yourself. You got to look a little deeper. OK, that's a message for somebody. Definitely meditate because there, there's a there's a wealth inside of you that is ready to literally explode. It's like it could be that you just do one small thing differently and it changes everything. It could be a, a, an aspect of you. It could be a, a core of your character or personality or understanding or knowledge or whatever it is or a belief. But it's like take time to reflect on that. Um, take time to reflect so that, you know, that can be um, realized by you. Now, as we talk about relationships, one thing that I have to say is a lot of you have a lot of relationships in your life that are going to be changing. Some of you walked away from relationships. Some of you are going to be walking away from certain situations. And some of you, it's like, again, you have walked away from something, stand your ground on that, but you have somebody or something new entering your life. For for some of you, there's somebody that has been literally um, thinking about you, somebody who's been literally planning for you, okay? And for the, a lot of you, we're talking in terms of love. We're talking in terms of romance, OK, and you will know that that resonates with you, because if you do, you know, if, if you know, sub stability in terms of emotions and family is important to you, you will have that. And that's that's happening for you. Another thing is anybody who makes you feel tied down or restricted or anything, stay away from that. This is a time to where it's like people who are close in your life, even friends, enjoy people that is easy to be around. Enjoy people that when you talk to them, when you're around them, you feel better. Like spend your time around people who reciprocate the type of energy and vibe that not only you bring, but that you're that you're wanting to continue to cultivate in your life. You have very significant relationships coming in, okay? And again, some of you, it's like you have somebody entering your life that it's literally what you pray for if you want a family if if you desire marriage if you desire these things this is happening for you literally right underneath your nose it's happening thank the most high in advance continue to balance yourself out continue to find and create those positive affirmations for yourself that shift so to saying i'll never have anybody none of my relationships ever work out things are always working out for me other people who have significant relationships that they um, have been able to stand the test of time that they enjoy, those who have God-given partnerships, they at one time felt exactly the same way that I did. Many of them did. I don't have to figure out everything right now. I have God working with me with all things. I'm never alone. There are certain things that I, I don't understand, but everything always happens in divine timing. I love that there are certain things that haven't shown up in my life because it gives me the opportunity to, to prepare, prepare myself for it even more to where I can fully enjoy it and fully be able to experience it the way that God intended me for it to experience it because I will be ready. Everything is happening as it's supposed to. You have to get used to talking to yourself and finding those affirmations and those shifts that you feel it in when you hear it, okay? this has been another episode of the daily guide the daily vibe hosted by yours truly pretty boss 10909 when i tell you for those of you who this is for focus on your finances focus on what you're supposed to be doing for work focus on your priorities 
okay? Because your greatest possibility right now, especially during the month of November, is you can see this could be your best month of the year, even though it's crazy because it's already November 13th. But I'm telling you, like, even in the next, like, 15, 20 days, some of you could be like, yo, this is crazy. Like, how did, where did this come from? There was nothing, and now it's like it, it, it just arrived. It was there. I'm telling you, like... <laughs> When resources appear in your life, especially when you're leaning on alignment and you're not leaning on micromanagement, you'll start to feel like that lady in the Bible who Elisha was like, feed me and my, feed me. And she was like, look, me and my son going to die, but we got you, man of God. And he told her to sell them oils and she didn't even know she had enough oils to sell. But guess what? As she was selling oils, the oil just never ran out and she had continual supply. She had continual abundance and I bet you they was eating every day. That was far from her last meal. So it's like that. It's like do what you're doing and you're going to see that the resources and everything always appears to you. When you're on path, when you're moving in the right direction, you can guarantee that you're setting yourself up for a better tomorrow. Each moment, each day, right now, what we're doing right now is what's paving the way for tomorrow. It's what's paving the way for the next hour from now, from the next day from now, from the next year from now. It's what we do today in the moment. When you're practiced, when you're focused, when you're centered, when you are keeping your mind and eyes focused on God and you feel that peace that surpasses all knowledge and understanding, irregardless, which that's not a word, but they've been making it popular on social media, regardless of circumstances, this is when you're going to see your entire life shift rapidly okay this is when you're gonna see and remember and realize who you are and why you came here y'all let me know why let me know if this resonates in the comments for you hope that you have a beautiful amazing amazing wednesday a very blessed week a great month hold the course do the best that you can today and remember that each day is a new day to redirect yourself and to do better I love y'all and I'll talk to y'all soon. Checking out November 13th, 11.43 a.m. Pete 44, there we go. <laughs> Peace.